Hi, good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Lorenzo and I'm going to be presenting um, a topic on the processing and presentation of antigen. This is particularly immunology and microbiology related, so join me in this presentation lecture. So basically I want you guys to know that the MHC class 1 molecules are loaded with peptides via the endogenous pathway. Partially digested peptides are then loaded into the grooves of class 2 MHC molecules on the antigen presenting cells by the endosomal or also known as the exogenous pathway. The antigen presenting cells migrate to the secondary lymphoid organs where they present this process antigen to the recirculating naive lymphocytes. The binding of the TCR to the peptide, also known as the MHC class 2 complex, provides the first signal in TSA activation. The second signal is known as the costimulatory molecule interactions, which includes the CD28 binding to the B7, the CD4 binds to the MHC2, CD8 binds to MHC1, the LFA1 binds to ICAM1, and CD2 binds to LFA3. This serves as the second signal in a T-cell activation. The third and final signal in T-cell activation includes cytokines, which are interleukin-2, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and Turner necrosis factor alpha. Superantigens are viral or bacterial proteins that cross-link the variable beta domain of a T-cell receptor to an alpha chain of a class II MHC molecule, and thereby cause polyclonal activation of T-cells and overproduction of cytokines and as a result leads to systemic toxicity okay that is a superantigen an example of uh, superantigens for you guys uh, is uh, an example is um, uh, TSST1 also known as toxic shock syndrome toxin Another one is streptococcal pyrogenic and exotoxins, and another one is staphylococcal enterotoxins. These are all examples of superantigens. Okay. Activated Th cells um, act as the orchestrators of the effector mechanisms of the immune response, and basically this is antibody synthesis, macrophage activation, cytotoxic T cell killing, and natural killer cell killing. So naive Th cells uh, differentiate into Th1 cells when the interleukin-12 from macrophage or interferon gamma from natural killer cells is present. The Th1 cells secrete interferon gamma, interleukin-2, and Turner necrosis factor beta. I want you guys to remember that the naive THO cells differentiate into the Th2 cells when there is extracellular attack. The Th2 cells secrete interleukin-4 interleukin-5, interleukin-6, interleukin-10, interleukin-13, and also um, TGF-beta. The cytokines that are produced by the Th subsets are cross-regulatory. Remember that the interferon gamma produced by the Th1 cells will inhibit the Th2 cells, as well as the interleukin-4 and the interleukin-10 that are produced by the Th2 cells will then also inhibit the Th1 cells. Therefore, this leads to whenever Th1 is being activated, it will inhibit any processes that allows Th2 cells to be produced and its, uh, its effects. So, as I said before, this process is cross-regulatory. Now, in regards to T-regulatory cells, these are CD25 positive and they express the FOXP3 transcription factor. They develop from THO cells and are believed to be important in the prevention of autoimmunity. The last point that I want to give you guys is that Th17 cells are identified by the transcription factor rho gamut and their production of interleukin-17. They play a role in the tissue damage associated with some of the some of the uh, autoimmune diseases that um, I will mention, such as IBD irritable bowel disease, also known as uh, Crohn's disease. Um, another one would be uh, systemic 
lupus, arithmetosis, and whatnot. That concludes my lecture for processing and presentation of antigen. And I want to show you guys this particular graph, which is uh, an overview of the inhibition that I said before, cross-regulatory pathway between the Th1 and the Th2. Note that Th1 produces interferon gamma, inter interleukin-2, and ternary necrosis factor beta. The interferon gamma, when produced by the Th1 cell, it will come and inhibit the Th2. So therefore, it prevents excess Th2 from being produced. And uh, whenever the H2 is being produced by the Th0 cell, it releases interleukin-4, interleukin-5, interleukin-6, interleukin-13, and TGF-beta. And, and from all of these effects, the interleukin-10 and interleukin-4 are the ones that come out and inhibit Th1 cells. So as you notice, that the Th1 and the Th2 have cross-regulatory processes to prevent the other from being produced when the other one is being produced. Okay? Remember that the Th2 basically is, uh, is needed for humoral effector mechanisms for the production of B cells and the plasma cell. The Th1 cell, on the other hand, is necessary for the stimulation of effector cells for the cell-mediated immunity. So these all play a role in the adaptive immune response. Take a look at this graph, study it, understand it, master it. Thank you very much for listening to my lecture. Have a good evening. Ciao.